On the morning of the trial, the wound in my neck started bleeding again. It had scabbed over days before. I'd only kept bandaging it because I didn't want to see it. But as I sat in the sweltering courtroom with all eyes on me, in a cloud of whispers like buzzing flies, I could feel wetness oozing under the pad of gauze, and when I touched the edge of it, my fingers came away bloody. I looked where I'd avoided looking before, across the width of the courtroom to where Antony sat with the rest of them on the defendant's benches. He looked back at me for the first time since that night, and his face confirmed that there was some magic in it. They had given me an airtight case against them. I thought that Antony even looked satisfied, in a grim kind of way, but it was hard to tell from across the room. They'd found me abandoned in a field on a full moon night. My parents, whoever they were, might even have met me as a kind of sacrifice, except that no one does that anymore, now that there are laws against wares biting humans. I had imagined the scene a million times, the seven of them in a circle around me, Antony the lean gray wolf, Leo shaking the tawny mane that gave him his name, Larry glossy black and massive in the moonlight, each of them his distinct animal self, puzzling over an abandoned human baby. The way Antony told it, I had slept through the whole thing, the finding, Larry carrying me home in his paws. Back in the house, they had laid me down on the ratty Persian rug in the living room, and only then had I woken up. They had all expected me to start crying immediately when I saw them, but instead I had reached up and grabbed Antony's ear, laughing, and they had decided to keep me. I was staying in Mrs. Briarton's boarding house in the center of town. She had offered to take me in until the trial was over. I had a room on the second floor with a deep window seat and a pale pink bathtub and wallpaper with little rosebuds on it. It was just the kind of room I'd imagined on the odd days when I tried to picture my other life, the one where my parents hadn't abandoned me or where a human couple had taken me in instead of a pack of wares. Now that it had come true though, I only felt numb. This morning, the morning of the trial, I tried braiding my hair so that I'd look more like the other women, as though anything would make them forget who I was. I never braided my hair before, though, um, though I brushed the tangles out every morning and every night, or one of them had done it for me. Larry was best at it, for all his massive hands. But it didn't seem to want to twist into a tidy rope the way I'd seen other women's do, and Mrs. Briarton found me nearly crying with frustration. Here, let me help you, she'd said, taking the brush from my hand and standing behind me. I saw compassion in her eyes in the dressing table mirror, and for a second I wondered what it would have been like to have a mother. Then she was finished, and my hair was braided, and she was telling me that it was time to go. I'd been prepared to be convinced the morning after. I'd woken in my own bed, clean and safe, and for a few seconds I'd burrowed deeper into the crisp sheets and ignored the shadow at the edge of my memory, convincing myself that I must have had a bad dream. Then I turned over and felt the sharp lance of pain in my neck, reached up and touched the neat bandage. Even then, I hadn't gone immediately to confront them. Instead, I'd taken a long bath in the enormous clawfoot tub, as though I could soak it all away. When I'd finally gone into the kitchen, wearing an old flannel shirt of Leo's with my wet hair dripping down my back, Antony was leaning against the counter as though he couldn't stand up on his own. I'd been ready for a fight, ready for him to apologize, to explain that they'd been desperate, that they couldn't have done it any other way, that they had to keep me in the dark in case the police caught wind of it and questioned me. I realized later that none of that would have actually made it okay, but I'd spent my whole life believing that Antony could fix anything, and so I believed that he could fix this. What actually happened was that he handed me a cup of coffee fixed just the way I like it, with a lot of maple syrup and a touch of cream, and said, the police will be here in half an hour. Thank you.